and have a guess. What does IGI stand for? I'll tell you later. Plenty still to come on, Gamepad, but first the answer to the teaser I set before the break. I asked you to watch this footage from the follow-up to Project IGI, called IGI2 Covert Strike, and try and work out what IGI actually stands for. Did you get it? The three words are, I'm going in. Something he is quite evidently trying to do right now. Unfortunately, before he manages it, he gets taken out. People say they can't imagine life without animals. Well, I can't imagine games without animals either, especially animals of the mascot kind. Today's essential chart is our current top three animals in games. At number three in our chart of the new wave of animal mascots, Blink's a time sweeper. Not the first cat to appear in a video game, but his pedigree is beyond reproach. He's the latest brainchild of Naoto Oshima. If you've not heard of him, you'll certainly know his other famous games character, because in 1991, Oshima-san created Sonic the Hedgehog. So really, Blinks is a creation of the greatest mascot maker of the lot. Sonic might be fast, but Blinks can fast forward. More than that, the video recorder style controls at the bottom of the screen allow him to fast forward, rewind and generally mess with the flow of time. It's this unique ability that secures Blinks a starring role in our chart. At number two in the chart of the new wave of animal mascots, not this Triceratops or this foxy lady, but one courageous, heroic, gung-ho, foxy fox they call Star Fox, or his actual name, Fox McCloud. OK, it is debatable whether he's new wave enough for this chart, since there have been Star Fox games on the last two Nintendo consoles as well, so he's a bit of a dinosaur himself. However, since his adventure on the Cube is so unlike the space shoot 'em ups he's previously starred in, you could say the character has been reinvented. Star Fox creators Rare have now parted ways with Nintendo, but we hope Star Fox himself will never be extinct. At number one, Animal Crossing, a game that easily tops our chart of the new wave of animals in games. You don't play an animal, you live amongst them, in a forest. As the only human around, the aim of the game is simply to eke out a happy existence with the talking animals in your little community. Looking for fossils to donate to your local museum, for instance. The animals are so much more than mascots. You really won't have played anything like this before. So when I say new wave, I mean new wave. There's no specific aim or mission to accomplish. You merely build a life in the village and relate to the critters around you. So when it comes to creatures in games, Animal Crossing is the leader of the pack. A German games journalist once told me that the most popular form of game in his home country was the management sim. And no, of course he wasn't joking. But proving that all stereotypes aren't correct, Gamepad hung out with Bernd Bayreuther of Radon Labs, who took us through the breathtaking world of Project Nomads. They had no chance. Two of the friends felt suddenly of the towers in their hands. I knew I should have concentrated in German lessons. Luckily, Bernd Beereuter was a bit more studious in his English classes. The game is about a world of floating islands. And you are a wizard engineer who builds up a city on one of those islands into a floating battleship. Yeah. 
Sehr gut. Benutze den Wachturm, um deine Insel zu bewegen. At the beginning of the game, you decide um, to choose from one of three characters. And depending on what character you choose, this varies your magic. For example, this is John. He is uh, the explorer type, the, the engineer. There's also Susie, which uh, uses more the uh, natural um, magic. And on the other hand, there's Goliath. He uses uh, destructive power. A typical battle in this game may play very different from player to player. Depending on what you prefer to, to do, you can choose to, to use your gun towers and to, to shoot with your gun towers, or you can decide to use uh, fire spells or detonator spells to, to throw them onto your enemies. Or you can decide to jump into planes or other vehicles and use them to solve the problem. I am most proud of the game about the visual style, since this is very unique. This mixture of Juven style and magic and fantasy is something completely new. One of the biggest problems I mean, during the development of the game was to, to develop a visually a believable 3D cloud that are lightened by real-time sun and by explosions and so on. Uh, but now we have them. They are uh, free-formed and moving and, and lighted by the real-time lighting. The most impressive thing in the game is uh, nearly at the end, there's a, a huge uh, story change, uh, uh, a switch uh, that characters you know are completely different than you expect. And there, a very big battle happens within an old, half-destructed, old ruin of a big temple and that will blow everybody away. Then this is unexpected and visually exhausting. Zum Dank werde ich dich reich belohnen. Folge mir. Nein, Folge mir. Sehr gut. Alles in Ordnung. If there were a league table of first-person shooters, then our next game would definitely be in the top three. After what seems like a lifetime of waiting, it's time to leave grim reality behind, pick up those futuristic shooters, and take part in Unreal Tournament 2003. Oh yes, we've been waiting for this one. Add together the award-winning original, the months of delays, the phenomenally powerful new game engine, and you've got an eager audience ready and willing to get online with a game that has the potential to go to the top of the tree as best online multiplayer first-person shooter ever. So we got our copy in, we loaded it, we had a practice. We piled up snacks and isotonic drinks for sustenance in the long night ahead, and our net connection went down. Don't ask me why, our floating IP address floated off or something. So whilst the finest brains in connectivity tinkered with the cable modem, we took the game elsewhere and checked out more of what we could do with it offline. Oh look, we picked up a link gun. That's new. Of course the first thing you do is check out the weapons. No, must be just me then. Link gun and lightning gun are among the new hardware although the lightning gun simply replaces the sniper rifle. Although they look different, the effect is basically the same. For us, it was the link gun that really stood out, as you could use it on its own, but when you fired it with a teammate as well, the beams become much stronger. Great idea. I don't even have to mention the great graphics, do I? They'll blow you away as you're blowing stuff away. As single player lets you sample the various game modes offline with a selection of bots to keep you company, we'd say we were now well ready to take the fight online. And we'll let you know what that's like if we live to tell the tale. Next time on Gamepad, superheroes, absolute perfection in Formula One, and not one, but two Lord of the Rings games. But which is the true Lord? Plus, the physical, fast-paced action, the drama, the emotion, 
the assist to DeLon Wagner. And the tallness of basketball. We'll tell you if the 2003 season NBA game is like big flash trainers or old plimpsoles. And we go behind the scenes with the new Die Hard Vendetta game. Step out of line one more time. I'm taking you off. Who's that last part, Al? You're breaking up. Stay out of trouble. And he's not a superhero. He's just an average everyday guy who just finds himself in bad situations, which he has to deal with grudgingly. Dive, dive, dive. 